Abu Yasser Institute is here to help For the less fortunate and the less privileged To the righteous ways of Allah And put you through the holy Quran So that you could see the light So that you أعوذ بالله من السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنختدي لولا أن خدان الله والصلاة والسلام على حاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين وبعد اللهم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وخل الأبدة من لساني يفقه قولي First of all, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this way of life, for this Islam. Had it not been for Allah's guidance, you and I would never have been in any position to guide ourselves into this way of life. And so therefore, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nourisher, the sustainer, the evolver, the molder, and the shaper of all the worlds. And may peace and blessings of Allah be upon the last and final messenger, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his household and companions, and all those who follow him until the end of time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm so very elated uh, to be in front of you, and I'm claiming humility in front of you. I'm claiming absolute humility to be in front of you. And I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making it easy for me to become part and parcel uh, of your life. And this is the exact thing that Allah has watched mankind from the time of creation. The topic in front of me is the purpose of uh, our creation on earth. Why are we in this world? Did we just happen to be here just like that? Did we just fall from a tree? Did we just fall from, you know, the heaven? What is it? Did we just came out from the sea? Did we create ourselves? Or is there a purpose that we are on the earth? Well, the purpose of our creation uh, uh, for all men and women uh, of all time have been known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala long before we were even created. Since the very first time mankind set his foot on earth, man has been thinking about the environment that he found himself in. Man has been given that natural inclination it is sort of something maybe it's a computer that Allah has embedded in our system to recognize that Allah exists based upon what we see in our environment because according to men of intuition they say nothing happened by itself without any primal mover Nothing comes to existence except through some kind of a purpose. So man was given all this key information around him. The sun, the moon, the stars, the river, the day, the night, the vibration of the heavens and the earth, the movement of the galaxies. Everything that is around mankind is a tool for man to realize that all this thing could not come by itself except there's got to be someone that said that in motion. A lot of people think that they are in this dunya to make a lot of money. A lot of think, people think they are in this dunya to dance, to be the best musicians. A lot think they are in this world to compete, to amass wealth, to have children, to do all this kind of thing. Because I remember there was a time I was giving some talks in Seattle, Washington, and the white, some white man came along and he was asking me, he said, Muhammad, well, well, you've said it all. But the point I'm trying to get home to you is that we, the non-Muslims who live in the West, are well to do than you guys who claim to be men of religiosity. If you look at the world today, that's what he said, it's a lot of poor people that are Muslims. You guys have been bowing down, prostrating, and everything, and your God did not listen to you. Meanwhile, we who claim that God does not exist, because today, 
most of the people, the new trend is atheism. You know, atheism, the belief of the non-existence of God. They have taken Allah away from the equation. God does not exist. But yet, these people are so rich. They got everything. So they ask the question, why? If your God is really a God, why is it that you guys are poor? And we are rich. As a matter of fact, you left your own country, you came to our country. And you live here, you know, to get bread and butter, to satisfy your soul. So why are you here if, if your God exists? But Allah's standard is not our standard. It's a lot of people that are rich. Allah gave them that richness. In return, it is a trust that Allah will question, how did you disperse your wealth? Some are very, very poor. Allah will ask them, how did you gather your emotion to believe that whatever happened, it is the cause of Allah who knows the infinity who put you in that situation. Allah is going to question, did you satisfy yourself with it? Did you believe that it is Allah who set that emotion? So being rich and being poor really is not a criteria to, be, I mean, to um, set up a pace to say that these are rich, these are poor. But in the first place, who told you that you are the richest people? We are the richest people on the face of the earth. The Muslims are the richest. When you look at the distribution of wealth on earth, we are much richer than them. They go to work every day. They wake up, they have to go to work. The rich and the poor, they still have to go to work. But look at the Arab world. Today, if there is no oil on the face of the earth, in this earth, the whole globe will come to gridlock. It will stop. If there is no oil to move the engine of globalization, believe me, the world is not going to function. So we, the Muslims, don't have to ride up and go to work every day. Allah just put the wealth in the desert for us. And we call you with your PhD to go to work for us. So what are you talking about? You are rich and we are poor. You look at it from a narrow point of view. So this trend, the rational approach to our you know, ancestors started rudely. Um, the resounding echo of the Quran, the Quranic verse said, we create mankind and jinn except to worship Allah. Mankind and jinn. Actually, it means the whole, anything that Allah has created, it is meant to serve Allah in one way or the other. Allah created all this thing so we could realize that Allah exists. And it is consistent with the nature of man. All this mechanism that Allah has put in place is consistent with the nature of man. So in this constitution, therefore, ignoring or rejecting this trust that Allah has you know, put in man, set in man uh, in a place whereby mankind will find himself in a quagmire, in a situation that mankind have entangled himself, and so he could not see the real thing ahead of him. By ignoring or rejecting this, it abuses your own existence that Allah really set us in motion there's going to be a time that uh, Allah will look into everything it is not the belief of the you know uh, him, uh, the Hindu religion that believe in a vicious circle of uh, creation that there's not going to be the day of judgment they don't believe that it's going to be a day of judgment the Hindus and the Buddhists they don't believe that they believe whatever you do uh, in this life today you know um, explain how you're going to live again in the next world. It is a vicious circle of rebirth, reincarnation. They believe that uh, this is what's going to happen. So today, if you are a human being, and being a human, you did something wrong. You know, you cheat your brother, you steal, you do all these things, vices. When you die, you're going to come back as an elephant. And when you come back as an elephant, if you do bad thing within the animal kingdom, you're going to come back as maybe a a cow or a rat or a monkey depend on what you do and if you do good being a cow the next rebirth the you know vicious circle of uh, uh, rebirth you're going to come back as a human being and when you become a human being you will come back like a, a dark skinned human being can you imagine you're going to come out as a dark skinned human being 
And when you do good, being a dark-skinned human being, when you die, the rebirth, the reincarnation, you're going to be a light-skinned human being. And when you become a light-skinned human being and you did right, you're going to jump and join the circle of life, which is called in Hinduism, Nirvana. Nirvana is the state where you join yourself with the forces of creation. You become one with the creator. And that is an ongoing trend. They believe in all this, but this is not the case when it comes to the Abrahamic religion, which is Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Um, go, I'm jumping. Worship is explaining everything in Islam that an individual does for the law that Allah has set in motion. This includes religious beliefs. Allah did not create you just so you just walk and do things that you want to do. There are certain laws and codified information or legislation that Allah has set in motion and that is the religious belief that you have to believe in them and act upon them. The social activities that you do determine the kind of person that you are. So in the Quran you see a lot of phrases that Allah is saying Taqullaha wa qulu qawla sarira You know, Taqullaha wa qulu lin nasi khusna You know, fear Allah and be kind to mankind and say beautiful words. So the social setting that you live in also plays a major role in the kind of person that you're going to be in the Yom Al-Qiyamah. So do not think that Allah is not watching you. As we know in Islam, there are angels on the left and the right dictating exactly what you do. So in your social life itself, it is a beautiful thing to act right. The messenger said he was sent to perfect beautiful moral conduct. So the social aspect of life itself shouldn't be like that of the animals. The animal's life in the jungle is uh, the life of uh, the strong survive and the weak fall by the wayside. Can you imagine Allah did not created you to be a lion or all this, this, this carnivores, the tiger, hyena. Allah did not do that to you. Allah created you as a human being. He did not make you a stone, nor a fish, nor a jungle. Allah make you a human being. Because man is uh, uh, on this face of the earth. And there are so many evidence and reasons to believe that the creation of man, creation of man, is the highest of Allah's creation. The angels are the ones that take care of us. The angels, excuse my language, they are so to speak like a zombie. If an angel understands the creation of water, that's all he understands. An angel is like set up to do certain things, and that's all he knows. But you, Allah, have given mankind the ability to think, process information, and rationalize. Most of Allah's creation do not have this, you know, beautiful thing. That to think, to reason, to rationalize, to act. Most of the angels don't have that. They know exactly what Allah has asked them to do. لا يأسون الله ما أمره ويفعلون ما يؤمرون Allah said, do this, and that's all they know how to do. Allah said, don't do this, that's what they do. They don't know what is this, what is that, what is do, what is that. They have their own setting. And they are the ones that take care of us. They move around all over the world taking care of us. Yet, we don't see them. So being an individual, walking and talking on earth, is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah did not leave you alone, alone as a man. He gave you a book, a, the Quran. And that Quran should be the catalyst. A book that you know, explains the sort of life that you live on earth. And that is the Quran. Allah did not leave you alone. He gave you a messenger, the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to be the guide for mankind. All the messengers were guide. They were the same thing. They guided their own people. But that of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is a global guidance. The rest of the messengers, they were time bounding. Wherever they were sent, it is meant for that particular region or nation. You know, the distribution of guidance was meant for their community. We've never seen that community. We don't know how they live. But we believe, as a matter of faith, that Allah has put in the Quran that they came. So we believe that they came. They were given a book. We also believe that they were given a book. But the finality of the book was given to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our social setting should be in conformity with what Allah has given as contribution to the welfare of the society and fellow human beings. I think I've explained that in details a little bit.
Now, every single act that is uh, carried out of the sake, uh, for the sake of Allah, is, uh, is in tune with the submission and the de definition of Allah's creation. So our creation is so beautiful, our creation is so symmetrical, our creation is so tantamount to the height of all creation. Mr. Chairman, uh, studies on the purpose of this universe has been debated on a heated scale. As a matter of fact, as I'm speaking right now, the debate is ongoing how this universe is in motion. That it has been debated heatedly amongst contemporary scientists and majority of them clearly show that this universe could not have existed from all eternity by itself. This is what the antagonists of Islam are saying. They wrongly propose that we came as a result of chance. What is chance? Chance is, is we just came by, we just happened to come by chance. And I was asking them, if you have a watch, like I'm having a watch, you have a watch, if you dismantle the watch in your hand, on your hand right now, and you throw it up, what are the chances that by the time it falls down to earth, somehow it's going to arrange itself and become a watch again? The chances are remote. It's close to impossible. And if I ask you, the airplane that is at the hangar, at the airport, I mean, current international airport, it came by itself last night. Would you believe that? You're going to say, man, Mr. Mohammed, what is wrong with you? You mean the airplane came by itself? No. Why? Because you are thinking that it was created or manufactured by an ingenious ingenuity of the humankind. Someone who have technical knowledge, who foresee the beauty of engineering, created this massive object we call, you know, an uh, airplane. And therefore, somebody created it. And if I say this building right here came by itself out of the blues, would you believe that? No, because you know it was someone, an engineer, who planned everything and then eventually he built it up. So the same thing applies to the universe. The universe could not come by itself except it has been created. And that is why they say chance. So you ask them, who created the universe? They say, well, it's nature. What? Nature created this material, this intricate material? Nature does not have consciousness to think and create such an you know, intricate material that we call the universe. If nature cannot create a watch, that you have on your hand. So how can nature create the whole universe? There is a purpose to this creation. And as I'm speaking right now, the nature that they say created this universe is still in motion from 20 billion years ago. That is the primal origin of the universe. They said nothing existed on this planet, but three elements existed. Hydrogen, helium, and a huge amount of dust. These dusts, they came together in aggregated form, and then eventually, heat, radiation, happened in this material, then it became so big beyond your expectation and thinking, then somehow it exploded. Boom! They call that what? The Big Bang. It, it is so big! The massive structure was so big, they say it's a big bang. And guess what? It happened 20 billion years ago. And I, as we sit here right now, it is an ongoing, that boom, it is still going. That is the recession, the expanding universe. That means every 15 seconds, the universe is expanding 1 million miles from 20 billion years ago. That means as we still sit here right now, it is still boom, that it is still receding. And how do you know that? They said we send balloon in the you know in the in the you know in the uh, atmosphere in the celestial it takes pictures of the rarefied materials we bring it down to earth we analyze it then we can see the red section of the spectrum light is moving at the speed beyond your expectation moving from that breaking boom it is still moving up till now the model is if you have any water a stagnant water that is how they explain get a stagnant water come on even could do haka get a stagnant water get a stone throw it in the water what do you see the ripple effect is begin to move that is that explain the movement of the universe 
Or if you have a balloon, you know, during Christmas, Christmas balloon. Before you blow in the balloon, put it down, get a pen, and make a droplet all around it. Turn around it, make the same droplet, now begin to blow it. As you blow, you will see the droplets are moving away from each other, explaining how the universe is moving. That is the structure they gave us from the singularity. And so there is a purpose in creation. So we told them, Carl Zagan, one of the mastermind of 21st century in terms of thinking, this man has written over 72 different books. One of his books by the name The Cosmics, he said 20 billion years ago, all this thing happened. So Carl Zagan traveled all over the world and he's been given Nobel Prize and he's been given a lot of money. His children and great-grandchildren were given free education, Hambridge, Harvard, Yale, you know, uh, Princeton, and Oxford. Free education. For their grandfather have come up with this postulation, I mean postulation that the universe is perpetually moving. So we told Kazegan, look, Mr. Kazegan, in the Quran, the information that you've mentioned that the universe came into being as a result of this explosion, Allah said, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتَكًا فَفَتَكْنَا هُمَا وَجَعَنَّا مِنَ الْمَالِ كُلَّ شَيْءِ حَيِّ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ This verse belongs to the atheists. Yeah, it belongs to them. Those who say God does not exist. Allah say, okay, God does not exist. But, with all your telescope, haven't you seen أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Haven't you seen you the kafir? that the heaven and earth were joined together, you are telling me that three elements, hydrogen, helium, and huge dust, came together, then it blasted. Fatak, Ratak, who told Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this key information of creation, rendering the earth and the heaven and all it contained, that it happened not in chaos, but as a result of systematic creation that Allah have put in place. So definitely, there is purpose in creation. Now, in Christianity, the meaning of life is rooted in faith, in the gospel of the Christian, to the fact that believing in Jesus Christ, that his blood permeates our life, when we believe that he died, and then he's going to save us, I say, okay, I was having a, a, a dialogue, you know, sometimes, right now, I don't, I don't get enough debates. You know, I specialize on debate, even though I do Christianity. But my angle is debate. And that debate, the intention was not to bring him down. The, ex the intention is to expose the lies for those who are listening, to use their given senses to analyze the truth. So during my debates, in one of the, you know, uh, the debate, uh, I was told that um, Christ had to die for me, so I was asking, okay, I have sinned. Adam sinned, therefore I have sinned. This is their purpose of creation. Adam has sinned, therefore I am sinned, because I came from Adam, we all came from Adam. We need someone who is perfect, who has never committed any crime, you know, uh, uh, for him to die for the sake of mankind. So I was asking the question, when Adam ate the apple, was I there? Were you there? Why would Allah put me in hell for the sin of someone? I wouldn't do that. If you and your brother were identical twins, not identical twins, we can make the difference between you. One of you committed a crime and the police came to get him. He's not there and they got you. Would they put you in jail? No. Whoever did the crime must do the time. So that is the law of nature. Allah is not going to punish me for the sin of someone else. So that you could see the light. If you believe, you'll achieve. It is all in your mind. Help the needy with only a dime. Help the needy with only a dime. Abu Yasser is here to help. Abu Yasser 
Abu Yasri Institute is a free online based courses and first term better learning experience and outcome for our students. We did not stop there. We advise women, youth, children and find better solutions. Our courses Quranic recitation, hadith, tajweed, fiqh, aqida, Arabic, Sabbath, Salat, Nabi, Sira, Islamic history and much more. An inclusive relatable content for development. Whether you are an absolute beginner in Islamic study or intermediate trying to improve your knowledge or for your family. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ma thalika, thalika hajar.